and what have the past 10 days been like for you? I think first and foremost it's an extremely proud moment for myself uh, from a personal point of view. Um, it's a real honour you know, to be the head coach and manager of this football club and um, although the last seven to ten days have gone extremely quick um, it's been a real happy time for me because um, the opportunity to be back in the Premier League, the opportunity to be back closer to my family uh, were the two main reasons why uh, this was the right move for me. How difficult a decision was it for you to leave a club of the size and stature of Rangers, especially considering what you achieved there? It was a difficult decision and um, I certainly left with a heavy heart. Uh, I built up some fantastic relationships up at Rangers. It's a club that I've got immense respect for. Um, I was given a remit three and a half years ago up at Rangers and um, we went on a journey and we completed that remit and um, approximately 10 days ago the opportunity came to join another iconic club and I think it's important to make sure that this press conference is about Aston Villa and um, it was an opportunity that I couldn't let pass me by. You've obviously had so much success in the past, what will success look like for you here at Villa Park? and? What will it feel like for you going back to Anfield in three weeks' time? I think success in football is always about winning football matches, first and foremost. Um, long term, I think the club would like to be back uh, on the European level. I don't think it's the right time now to put any date or specific date on that. Um, but for me, more importantly, it's about focusing on the short term, which is Brighton at the weekend. We need to start winning football matches again and uh, moving up the table. So that's the short term goal. And um, in terms of Liverpool, again, I don't think this press conference should be about any other club but Aston Villa. I think we have to show respect to our supporters. Um, I think everyone knows around the world what Liverpool means to me. But the focus and my commitment is very much on Aston Villa. And I said last week in a one to one that I'm all in and I can promise our support that's the case. Uh, Christian, how did you go about getting a manager of the calibre of Steven Gerrard and what has his appointment done for the mood around the club? Well, we're absolutely thrilled to have Stephen with us. The feeling is one of excitement, his drive, his determination, his constant pressing himself to be the best he can be. These are personal qualities that we think will fit well with our own football club at this stage in our evolution. We were lucky enough to have numerous applications for this position. Managing Aston Villa, I think everyone in this room would recognise, is one of the most prestigious jobs in football anywhere. And for Stephen to come through that and to be offered this position and to take this position is a fantastic moment in our club's history. How big a job has Stephen got on his hands here? Uh, what do you want him to achieve realistically? Well, we were quite clear when Nasef Sawiris and Wes Edens acquired the club three years ago. We were sitting somewhere around the middle of the championship and we set in place initially a five-year plan the mantra of that plan, the constant theme has been that we must be improving, improving our performances, improving our results, improving our finishing position. We're just over three years into that, into that journey and I think Stephen's arrival will reignite the club, push us forward. We have made no secret of the fact that this club is one of a tiny number of British clubs that's won the European Cup. That stage playing in Europe is something that is an exciting dream for our fans. When that happens, we shall see. But what we expect and what Stephen has promised to deliver is continuous improvement in our team. And I'm certain he'll do that. Stephen, you've had some great advice during your playing career and 
I've had nearly 200 games as a manager now. But did you reach out to anyone in particular when you were deciding that this was the right time to come back to the Premier League and the right club for you? I never really had that much time, in all honesty. Um, listen, I have people that are really close to me that I respect and trust, family members, close friends. Um, I've also been with the same representation since I became a professional. Um, and looking back, I've, I've always been confident I've had the right advice uh, for what the next step shall be. And um, again, I leaned on certain individuals within that. Um, but to be honest, when the call came, which was last Wednesday, I pretty much knew what I was going to do because I knew it was the right move for me. The chance to be back in the Premier League, the best league in the world, to compete against the best coaches, against some of the best teams, the best players. Um, I've missed the Premier League and um, it's great to be back. Can I ask you about the platform that Dean Smith has kind of laid for you here? It's quickly back in work, which is great to see. Obviously, he got his hometown club back into the Premier League. Listen, I, I, I certainly weren't surprised that he was offered the job so quickly. Um, Dean's someone who I've got immense respect for. Uh, I've been lucky enough to meet him on the odd occasion. And um, I've heard a lot of great things about him as a man, as a coach, as a manager. And um, he's left us a real good base here to build on, for sure. He's built a squad full of talented players. I wish him well. In, in, in his next job, obviously not against uh, the Villa, his hometown club, and I certainly respect the feeling of, of being that home, hometown boy and the connection you have to your club. So, um, I believe it's in good hands, and we'll do our best job for all the Villa fans, and Dean's certainly one of them. So, um, as I say, he's someone I've got big, big respect for. Cup champions, You've got thousands on the season ticket waiting list here. It's a really exciting time for the club. With the current squad and the current league position, what do you think fans can expect this season target-wise? I think we've got a fantastic academy here, you know, some fantastic staff that are doing a good job there. Uh, I have looked in from afar in terms of the youth team and, and the under-23 side and it's full of talent. Um, as someone who's been through the academy system and found a pathway uh, to become a professional into a first team, um, if the players are good enough and they can put the, the ingredients around that talent to be good enough for Villa's first team, they'll certainly be given uh, an opportunity. Um, for me, the important thing is to always worry about the next game, the next three points. We've got a real challenging game at the weekend and we've had very little time to prepare for it, so um, I don't really want to look too far ahead of that, but it's quite clear with the players we've got and the standard of the players throughout the squad that we should be higher than what we are. So it's one step at a time and we need to find um, that next win as soon as possible. Um, the challenge is can we find that against Brighton. Very much. Um, Johan, can I ask you please, um, can you talk us through the process of appointing Stephen? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> yeah, firstly, we um, established the, the relevant criteria for our new head coach. We then analysed a, a long list of around 20 coaches um, and those findings were presented to the board. We then agreed on a short list of, of four coaches, which we all would like to have conversations um, with. We had um, conversations with, with all of them, and, and Stephen was uh, outstanding um, throughout our meetings. Really? Thank you. Um, it's hard not to think of Gerard Hulier as you come here to Aston Villa. You talked of how you watch managers and how they shaped you. What influence did he have on you and what will it mean to be literally following his footsteps to the dugout here at Villa Park? Yeah, I'm sure he's looking down and he's very proud. Um, he's someone who I had a really close, strong bond and relationship with. Um, I'll be forever in debt for what he'd done for me, not just as a footballer, but as a human as well, he went out of his way to um, really change me as a person, both on and off the pitch. He helped me uh, a lot as a player, tactically, technically, um, really improved my game intelligence and the understanding of what it takes to be a professional and, and be consistent at the top level for, for a long period of time. So, um, But also, you know, going out of his way to meet my parents, to see what I was doing away from the game. Um, what I was eating, where I was spending my time. Um, he, re he really did give me a lot. He put his arm around me at the right times. Um, 
he shouted at me at the right times and um, we, we had a bond and a relationship that was very strong so when we lost him it was a real sad day and an emotional day um, I used to lean on him for advice a lot and um, I remember the words he used to say to me all the time was go and be the best version of yourself and you won't go far wrong so I'm sure he'll be looking down today very proud agree with that, Stephen. Um, you've talked about the facilities at Bodymore. You say there has to be a no-excuse culture. There's everything there. How does a player get into Stephen Gerrard's starting eleven? Are you banning tomato ketchup? What do you just say? I think it was already banned before I seen it. Uh, I think my staff know me pretty well. Um, the facilities at the training ground are elite, for sure. Um, the structures are all in place for this club to be successful. A lot of fantastic staff, we've had a great welcome. Um, there's a lot of ingredients that you need to be in my start 11 and the players will find that out pretty quickly. Um, you've got to have the right mentality and you've got to go above and beyond basically and um, really become or strive to be elite and strive to be the best version of yourself and um, you've got a chance of playing in our team. Liverpool, but I do have to ask you, has Jürgen been in touch because he was so influential to the start of your coaching career? I've been in touch with Jürgen since day one. Uh, he arrived at Liverpool. We live in a very similar area. I bump into him very regular when he's walking his dogs. Um, he's a great man. He's a great coach. I think Liverpool are very lucky to have him at the helm. And I'm a Liverpool fan, so long may that continue. Um, he sent me a message and um, he said he's looking forward to a big hug on the side and on December the 11th, so it's something for me to look forward to. Nick, on you go, please. Stephen, um, welcome to the club. You've Thank talked you. about the priority being to win games, but that you haven't had much time to prepare for the first game. Have you identified the biggest factor that will allow the team to win games? What you've seen so far? Yes, I, well, I think the stats don't lie. Um, I think at the moment, Aston Villa are the eighth top scorers in the league, um, which shows you that we've got very talented players in the forward areas, a lot of exciting players, and the creation has been okay. It can still be fine-tuned be better, which we'll work on. Um, but at the moment, the club's conceding too many goals. And it's 18th in the Premier League for conceding goals. Uh, so it's quite clear that we need to tighten up. We need to become a little bit more organised, a little bit more compact, hard to play against. And that's certainly one step that we need to improve in the short term. Uh, when we do, I believe we'll move up the league. The first game in charge is here against Brighton at the weekend. What would be your message to the fans ahead of that? Be prepared, get behind us. Um, I've played here on many occasions and the atmosphere has been top. You really get behind the team and give the team a, a huge lift and I've felt that. It's been tough at times to play against this team and against this support. Now it's with us. Um, it's a fresh start. Um, I hope Villa Park's rocking and it's roaring at the weekend. I can't wait for it. And um, myself, my staff and the players need to thrive off that and go and give them a performance to be proud of. Um, there's a motto at the club be prepared. We certainly will be. I hope they are as well. Um, you mentioned when you made the change that you wanted to give Stephen time to have an impact at the club. Bearing that in mind, do you know what your targets are now for this season? Well, I did mean by that that it's early enough in the season with many games left that um, the sky's the limit. And I think that's the way I like to run businesses and it's the way I think good football clubs think. Don't set artificial targets, but set no cap on your aspirations, on your expectations, and we'll see where that takes us. Uh, I'm quite sure, as, as Stephen has said, that our current position doesn't reflect the quality that we have in this football club, and we look forward to seeing improvement. Hi Stephen. Hello. Again, congratulations on the, on the appointment. How's the first week and a half been at the club, and uh, what's most impressed you about the club? It's been a whirlwind for sure, um, it's been great to get on the grass with the players um, and get started in that case, uh, get some information across to the players that have been here, obviously we've had quite a few internationals away, I'm looking forward to meeting um, the rest of them today, we have a session this afternoon um, and we've got two big sessions to prepare for the weekend. We are going to play slightly different than what's been before. I want to put my own stamp on things, my own identity and our philosophy. That will take time. Um, 
so you will see some changes in how we go about that at the weekend but as I say we're very much looking forward to the first game um, we've got a big 48 hours ahead of us in terms of on the grass and off the grass in terms of information across the players it's important that they listen and follow that and then um, we're straight into, into the action in, in, in a normal world you normally have a full pre-season which is five, six, seven weeks to, to prepare for your first game we, we haven't got that luxury but I've got every confidence in myself and the staff that we can be as best prepared as we can for the first challenge. It'll be tough because Brighton are going well. We have a real exciting new manager there who's, who's got his stamp on things now. They're playing well, but we're a good team as well and we're certainly looking forward to the challenge. What sort of message have you given the players going into the game on Saturday? It's a new start. It's a fresh start. Um, I'm not really focused or interested in what's gone before. I won't be digging into any previous games or... Um, what's gone on prior for me it's always about looking forward and tomorrow and the challenges ahead so I've told them to impress me the best way they can both on and off the pitch uh, we, we've had a meeting in terms of how we want the culture to look and the environment and the expectations um, the application and, and the attitude and the mentality from the players so far has been top class and as I say I'm looking forward to meeting and seeing up close and personal a few more talented players that we've got coming back late and um, I'm really looking forward to picking a, a squad for the weekend. Finally, whilst at Rangers, your side all, uh, often broke down the opposition with a high level of possession. Villa have spent the majority of games this season out of possession. Is that something you seek to change? Well, I'll have my own way of playing. As I say, I'll put my own stamp on, on things in terms of how I want my team to look out of possession and in possession. Um, I want my teams to be exciting to watch and entertaining. Um, we obviously need to look and analyse the squad personally, individually, collectively, look at the units. Um, but for sure, we, we'll build and we'll get better, we'll get stronger. And um, we will become a possession-based team. Um, when we can transition into that, time will tell. touched on it when, when the call came for the opportunity to come to Aston Villa and you talked about you know when it sunk in how long did it take for that call to sink in and for you to make that decision was it hours minutes half a day or something like that well I think it was a first and foremost it was a process um, I, I was called from my representation and made aware of Alan, uh, Aston Villa's interest um, that was a very exciting call to receive, first and foremost. Um, but then I had to get myself prepared pretty quickly to impress both owners, uh, Christian and Johan, um, who were demanding in terms of the details. Um, in a short space of time, I didn't sleep very much in, in the first few nights to be prepared to try and impress them and convince them that I was the right man for the job. Um, but thankfully we got there, there and I thank the owners for their trust and the opportunity and um, my promise to them was I'll do them as proud as I can. When you say you've missed the Premier League, you've been a few years out of it and that's quite a long time for the Premier League itself. How has that moved on whilst you've been away? I think... you missed the most? Well, I, I watch the games. I've never not watched. Um, even when I was over in LA, when I was up in Glasgow, uh, I always followed the Premier League. Um, for me it's the most exciting league in the world to watch on the eye and um, there's world class players, world class managers um, the, the, the speed, the intensity of the game I think suits me um, as a person, how I see the game so I loved my time up in Scotland and I'm very proud of the job we've done I walk away with my head held high I've left that club in a better position than when I took over for sure but now this is a new challenge, one that I'm very much looking forward to and I believe I'm back in the best league in the world. Um, that decision for me made total sense. And when you talk about challenge, there's, there's a risk obviously, you know, the modern life of a, of a football manager these days. Um, are you concerned about that at all? Does it, does, not a fear as such, but how much of a risk is that? If I had a fear or I was overly concerned, uh, I wouldn't have put myself forward for this job uh, or this role. Um, for me, pressure and responsibility in football is what I want. Um, I like to be challenged. I think with every manager job in, in, in this country, in any country, comes with an element of risk. Of course it does. Um, 
but for me that's the exciting bit is, is to go and prove to everyone that I'm good enough for this job that I can move this club forward and uh, make these supporters happy and for me a lot of people will put extra pressure and responsibility on my shoulders I welcome that I've lived with it since I was 17 years of age I can't wait thank you hello Stephen, will you look to replicate the template you had at Rangers when it comes to the playing style, or do you see it being more difficult to, to implement that style where you're dominating teams in a league like the Premier League? Wait and see is, is my answer to you. I, I don't want to be giving too many things away um, in, in press conferences. Um, as I say, I'll put my own stamp, I'll bring my own style to it. Um, I think you'd have to respect and, and realise the challenge of other teams in the league and where we sit in the table as of now. Um, so we need to build, we need to improve, we need to look for the small little marginal gains and the wins we can find early. And um, the long term plan is, 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 is to be successful. Whatever it takes from now till then, we will do and, and we will deliver. Rangers, you were appointed in May, you had plenty of time to prepare a full pre-season. How different is this challenge here at Villa? Of course it's different. It's a different league, different managers, different styles. Um, but, as I said in the earlier questions, it's where I want to be, it's where I want to um, challenge myself. We've got fantastic players here uh, who are intelligent. I'm sure they'll pick up the information really well. Um, at Rangers we had a lot of games in a short space of time, it was coming every two, three days. There's more training time here in the short term at Rangers, there's a lot of days where we can, you know, we're not restricted from a physical point of view. Um, them days are going to be gold dust in the coming weeks to really put our stamp on things and put our expectations over to the players and I believe the players will pick it up very quickly. In the past, I know you want to make the press conference just about Aston Villa, but in the past you have said that it would be a dream to manage Liverpool one day, but is it unfair to describe this as a, a stepping stone towards that? Very unfair, and um, you'll never um, hear me saying it's a stepping stone. For me, I'm really honoured and proud to be in this position. Um, as I say, I'm all in. I'll give this job everything that it needs for it to be a success. I'll be 100% committed and more so will my staff. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong in football to have dreams and aspirations. But as I say, Liverpool have got a world-class coach that they're very happy with. If he was to sign a lifetime deal right now, I'd be very happy for them and him. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. And Christian, if I can ask you about your own relationship with Stephen. You've known him for a long time since he was a player at Liverpool. What was it that you saw in him back then that made you think he would be a top manager? Well, you're quite right. When I had the privilege and honour of running Liverpool, Stephen was the club captain. That's um, kind of 10, 12 years ago. The personal qualities I saw in him then, no doubt about it, um, even, even 11, 12 years later, those are central to the person he is. Drive, determination, hunger, ultra-professional wanting to be. I, I hadn't heard the Gerard Houllier uh, quote before, but it is how I observed him then and how I observe him now. He just wants to be the best he can possibly be, and he gives off that messaging to everyone around him, which raises standards. So, yes, um, it's helpful to have seen the younger man, captain footballer version. Um, that doesn't get you a job as manager of Aston Villa. It's helpful at the margin. It doesn't even get you an interview. Finally, if I can ask you about Stephen's coaching career so far, what has impressed you the most when it comes to his time at Liverpool, but also Rangers as well? Well, there are two elements to that. Um, I think it was uh, an inspirational idea that, that when he was transitioning out of playing at Liverpool to coaching, that he was given full responsibility for his own team, the under-18s. The academy and youth football is the central feature of our strategy for this football club. What we've done in the last two years in taking an academy that was slightly full of cobwebs, hadn't produced a first team player for some time, to winning the FA Youth Cup within two years is perhaps the most, the most crowning achievement of the last three years. So Stephen's familiarity with the process of developing and bringing through 
great young players was a crucial attraction of his candidacy. And then the second element has come up in this meeting already. We haven't quite phrased it this way, but, but I remember when he took the job at Rangers. People have short memories. Nobody, not even the most optimistic Rangers fan, would have anticipated what they were able to achieve so quickly. I really have a crystal clear memory of that time. Most people who knew him in the game thought it was a crazily risky and dangerous move for a, play, for a player just getting into management with a great slot at Liverpool. Um, to me, that was the single most attractive feature of his candidacy. That shows the person we all know. Backing himself, absolutely fearless. That's one of our core values in taking that on. The fact he subsequently delivered a title, the fact he subsequently delivered regular success in Europe, they are the gravy. But the personal qualities to take that job on really attracted Nasef, Wes, myself and Johan. And as Johan said earlier, uh, his performances at interview were outstanding. Uh, he was the unanimous choice following that interview process. Thank you, Christian. Um, Stephen, my question actually picks up almost on the theme we've just heard. I mean, during your career with club and country, you must have seen managers go through great times and very hard times. You, with your profile, could have spent 20 years in a studio, living, uh, having a good living out of the game, and an honourable one as well. But you've taken two jobs in the full glare of the spotlight. Why on earth are you doing that? <laughs> good question. Uh, my wife says the same things. Um, Listen, for me, I love the game, um, I love winning, I love the buzz, and um, I love the preparation, uh, I love the tactical side of the game, and um, I'm a competitor. It's very difficult to lose them, them traits, even when you come towards the back end of your football career, and I knew that I needed to stay involved in the game in some capacity. Early on in my career, I didn't see myself sitting here for sure, um, but with a bit more life experience and uh, with age I really fancied giving it a go and um, so far I've really enjoyed that journey um, but it's getting even more exciting now. You've already told us that you were very keen to be back in the Premier League for reasons that you've explained and people will understand. I think this is the fifth Premier League job already that's come up this season. Having won it in Scotland you'd have been potentially a contender for any of them. Did it matter that the man you're going to have to look in the eye at hard times in the next months and years, Christian Perslow, you already know who you're dealing with. Is that important to you to make this job stand there? The club was the reason I wanted this job, the iconic stature of the club. Um, I've known this club for a very long time. Um, I think people on the outside maybe think that me and Christian are the best mates and we go to the cinema together and for regular meals. That's not the case. I haven't seen much of Christian for the past decade. We've bumped into each other on, on a few occasions. I expect nothing different from Christian as when I played. Real honesty, uh, the truth, constructive criticism. Um, I don't fear that. You know, I, I, I always want the truth. I always want honesty. They're two big values that I live by on a daily basis. Uh, same for Johan, uh, same for, for both owners. I think that's got to be the case at this level of the game. Uh, I think you've got to respect and appreciate that. That's not a matter of fear. Um, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to working together with these guys and making this club um, and putting this club in a better position than it's in as of today. So the same question in reverse, as it were, for you, Christian, in that again a club of this profile you could have had all sorts of people sat next to you today of very high caliber but you know him and at some point in the next few months and years you might have to look him in the eye and say no we can't Stephen or not tell him the answers he wants but you know who you're getting and you know who you're looking in the eye did that matter uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure I understand the question um, the people that I do um, yeah, listen, I, I, uh, people who know me, and Stephen does know me, as does Johan, as does Tommy, uh, will know that whether you're my son, whether you're my colleague, or whether you're my professional acquaintance, I like to be a straight shooter and be honest. Um, at the margin, as I said, does it help that we have known each other 12 years? 
yeah, I think in the early stages it probably does um, for both of us um, to get straight down to business really quickly without that sort of awkward get to know phase. But I didn't know Dean Smith from Adam and very quickly established an excellent working relationship. It's a crucial part of running a football club that you have an excellent professional relationship with your key staff and the single most important football person in any single most important person in any football club as as uh, Alec Ferguson once said is the manager and the relationship with myself is an important ingredient in that and it will be an excellent working relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Steve, congratulations Hello. on the, the job. Um, it's quite an interesting stat going around, you have to correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you scored more goals against Aston Villa than any other club that you faced and I'm just wondering what was your mentality when you used to face Villa and as you've identified conceded a lot of goals recently, they lost five on the trot. Is there any comparisons to be made for you? I was hoping that question was not going to come up in this press conference. I used to love coming to Villa Park because it's a fantastic, iconic stadium. The atmosphere was always fantastic here. Um, they was always round about where we were in the table, fighting for positions. Um, unfortunately, I can't change the past. Uh, the goals are there, a lot of wins are here, I can't change that, so I apologise for the Villa fans for that. Um, but now I'm on their side and um, it's different now, my job is to make them smile and be happy and um, I'm really looking forward to forging a relationship with the supporters because they need me, I need them and um, it's vital that there's unity at the football club because then results are a lot easier to find if that's the case yourself at the highest level as a player, you proved yourself in the Scottish Premiership. Is this job about proving that Steven Gerrard can succeed in the Premier League as much as it is about helping Aston Villa? I don't think it's all about me. I think it's about me putting my stamp on this team alongside my staff and me proving that I can improve Aston Villa as a football club. I can improve the position in the league. Um, we've got the FA Cup coming. Um, so for me, in the short term, it's about trying to put ourselves in a better position in the league, um, trying to have a successful run in the cup competition that's left, and then hopefully the supporters will be in a better place. That's the, the short term aims for me and the team. Um, it's very much not about me proving anything from a personal point of view, it's all about the team and the club from me. Usually when a new manager comes into a club, they've replaced one that's lost popularity with fans that perhaps elements of the support have turned against them. Is it strange for you replacing Dean Smith, who was much loved and a, a Villa boy himself? I very much respect uh, Dean and his relationship with the supporters. I don't think that should ever change. I think he's left a legacy here. I think he'll always be welcomed back uh, with open arms. Um, I'm sure the, sh the supporters will get their opportunity to show that appreciation. Um, for me, it's all about moving forward and looking forward. Um, he's done a terrific job here from when he took the reins to, to where he left it. He should be proud of himself and hold his head up high. Um, I've got nothing but admiration and respect for him, so um, his relationship hasn't changed in terms of him and the supporters in my eyes. Um, and I'm sure him being a big uh, Villa fan, he will be looking forward to seeing this team move up the table as well. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.